So, Facebook has a big decision. <laughs> she gets to go first. <laughs> Facebook is about to make one of the most consequential decisions in the company's history, should it let former President Trump back on its platforms. In general, I don't think it's right for a private company to censor politicians or the news in a democracy. Facebook banned Trump after January 6th and said it would reassess the decision in two years. Now time is up and Facebook says the decision is imminent. I've had people say to me, like, you guys will do anything for a dollar, you don't care, and quite the opposite was true. There was a lot of deliberation, but the other thing... Crystal Patterson is a Democrat. Katie Harbis is a Republican. Both had senior jobs at Facebook's offices in Washington, D.C., where they worked with politicians on using the platform. I think the decision to take Trump off the platform was overdue. We'd had a number of instances where he had posted things that for any other user would have been in violation of our community standards. He did the infamous post about banning Muslims from the country. When the looting starts, the shooting starts. Katie agrees it was right to ban Trump after January 6th. Did you think in that moment it was right to kick him off? I thought in that moment it was. In the lead up to that moment, I was still defending keeping him on the platform because as horrible as some of the things that he posted, I still just couldn't get myself past the point that I thought that people deserve to know what the people that are representing them have to say. While Trump's social media ban was welcomed by many in the US, it was also criticized by free speech advocates and some international politicians. In deciding what to do now, Facebook says it is assessing the risk to public safety and risk of imminent harm in giving Trump his account back. The parameters that Facebook have set in terms of figuring out if he should be allowed back on, essentially what it is is the mood, <laughs> the feeling it's in the country. It's a judgment call. It's a judgment call. I think it's very important to recognize that both of these decisions are going to have a ton of impactful consequences. And it would be foolish to think that either way is an easy decision. Whatever Facebook decides will set a precedent for political speech on the platform. Elon Musk has already restored Trump's Twitter account, although the former president hasn't tweeted yet. Katie and Crystal disagree on what Facebook should do. So this is actually where this mirrors a debate we'd probably be having internally. Looking at is there imminent violence happening, which I think is a little different than incitement to violence. It's a nuanced type of approach. And so I don't necessarily see that happening. You don't see other January 6th that have necessarily happened. I recognize that Katie's making a distinction between, what was it, eminent and... Incitement. Incitement. He is willing to use this platform to create that kind of energy and activity, and I think that means he loses his privileges to have access to it. I also think there's been no shortage of hearing from him. It's not like because he hasn't been on Facebook or Twitter that he's had any trouble getting his message out or had any trouble making sure people know how he feels about things. I don't think he's entitled to an account on there. Tens of millions of Americans voted for Donald Trump. For those tens of millions of Americans, they're going to say Facebook's a platform of censorship. They can still talk about Donald Trump. They can still talk about the election. They can have all that dialogue. I would be more inclined to let him back and then make sure they have a very clear set of criteria about what are the thresholds that would require the company to either take down content or demote it or eventually take him off the platform. Again, for what he is saying, I don't think it should take another January 6th level event in order to do that. Thank you.